The next topic we are discussing is the VEXUS, the Venus Axis Ultrasound Grading System. As mentioned before, initially it was all about cardiac output, the arterial system, but you can also measure and quantify congestion in the venous system. So there are four steps needed. First of all, you take a look at the IVC. It is published that in the longitudinal plane, if the IVC is above or 20 millimeters, you have to continue and look if there's congestion present. If it is below 20 millimeters, then there's a grade zero, there's no congestion present. Still, even though it's collapsible or not collapsible or enlarged or, or, or not enlarged, always look at the form and look at the transverse plane and the collapsibility. So this is very important when you perform a VEXUS exam to make up your mind and do not make mistakes initially at the already the first step while evaluating the blood pool. The next step is to look at the hepatic veins. I personally like this measurement, maybe due to the close proximity of the hepatic veins and the IVC to the right atrium, maybe because this measurement is also performed in case of constrictive pericarditis. But sometimes, and some of my colleagues consider this a little bit more tricky or difficult. If you want to measure it, of course, use the optimal aligned vessel in this transverse plane to the star of the liver veins, You can see the left hepatic vein, which is the most optimal to measure. And you have here a signal, an S and a D wave. And this is definitely a congested patient. If you cannot see it immediately, doesn't matter which one, it has to be one of the hepatic veins. Go to the right upper quadrant and simply scan through the liver and try to find an optimal view towards the hepatic veins and measure them more proximal. So not in the very end where you simply see a little bit, but really closer to the inferior vena cava. It is also overall better to use an abdominal transducer because simply the measurements, the color Doppler, they are optimized for abdominal imaging compared to the echo transducer. Still, you can use the echo transducer as well. How to grade it? Well, here's the grading system which is recommended and we also use. We have the hepatic vein signal, the portal venous signal and the infrarenal signal. And normal is this S wave and this D wave with the hepatic vein. If the D wave is then larger than the S wave, it's abnormal, but only mildly. And as we have seen before, if there's an S and a D wave, it is severely abnormal. This also is the case when there is, for example, a severe or even massive or torrential tricuspid regurgitation present. The portal venous system should have a pulsatility below 30%. If it is more pulsatile, it points towards mild congestion. If it is very pulsatile, so above 50%, it is severe congestion or a sign for severe congestion. Overall, use more, not only one, for example, the hepatic vein or the portal vein or the infrarenal signal, but use more and also the clinical information, echocardiographic evaluation, and of course the IVC to really be sure that you are grading it optimally. The infrarenal signal, you have, because they are very, very small structures, an arterial flow most likely and this continuous venous flow. If you have two waves, that points towards mild congestion. And if you only have the D wave, it points to severe congestion. And then you have grading, you have a grade zero, there is no congestion present. Look at the IVC, also look at B lines, look at the heart, look at diastolic dysfunction, look at collapsibility of the IVC, not only the size, look at the form, is it oval, which points towards a normal IVC, is it really round, that points towards a dilated or congested IVC. Grade one means mild congestion, you have a pathological IVC and any combination of normal or mildly abnormal waveform. So we are here now in this range. If you have at least one severely abnormal pattern and The IVC it is a moderate congestion. And if you have two or more severely abnormal waveforms, it is a grade three in the VEXUS grading system, which is severe congestion. To see the hepatic veins and the hepatic venous signal, here are some examples. Use color Doppler for guidance because, of course, the venous signal, it should be blue in color Doppler. So blue is away from the transducer, red is towards the transducer. And when you use pulsed wave Doppler, it also should be on the lower end, so the 
negative side because it's away from the transducer. Here you have this example with a suboptimal signal. When you have the optimal signal, you see nicely the S wave and the D wave, the S wave and the D wave. Here's another example of a non-congested person. If you're not sure, look at the ECG and the signal. So also for that reason, it's sometimes very helpful to, has, to have an ECG. If it is normal, the S is larger than the D wave, which is the case in both examples. And if there is congestion, malcongestion, there is a reversal. So the S wave would be smaller than the D wave and the reversal we have seen before. This, again, can be very difficult. I personally like this measurement. More to the flow pattern, the ECG during the exam helps because the A wave should follow the P wave. The A wave is this small positive wave seen over here. Here we have the P wave and here we have the A wave. So this is also a normal sign. The S wave then follows the R wave. So we have here the QRS complex and we have the S wave after the R wave. The D wave follows then the T wave, which is also the case here, seeing the D wave and the S wave. And there's also a V wave, which is in between the S and the D wave. So a small retrograde wave, the right atrial contraction is the A wave that is normal. Two small antigrade waves due to the systole, the S wave and the diastole, the D wave should be present as we have seen here in the signal and the signals before. The small retrograde wave during systole and diastole, which can be seen as the tricuspid valve returning to the normal position. This is a very small volume shift and just causes a little bit of rise in, in pressure, still physiological, which is this V wave. So this is the closing of the tricuspid valve. So systole, diastole, closing of tricuspid valve and the small retrograde A wave, the atrial contraction. Pathologically is if the D wave is larger than the S wave, showing elevated right atrial pressures or hypervolemia and severely elevated right atrial pressures lead to a positivity of this S wave. So the S wave will be positive. There are several pitfalls. The significant TR leads to a declining of the S wave and then the S wave is smaller than the D wave and even to a positive S wave, it's possible. This is tricky, even possible with out systemic congestion at all. So you should have more measurements and more signals, not just the one. The hepatic venous flow in case of liver cirrhosis, steatosis, hepatic lymphoma, abdominal cartridge syndrome, stenosis of the IVC or during the Sava maneuver also is a pitfall. In case of atrial fibrillation, we have a loss, of course, of the A wave and reduction of the S wave without systemic congestion. So the optimal signal, the optimal interpretation of the measurements and knowing the heart, also knowing comorbidities of the patient, liver comorbidities, is very important to perform a correct Texas exam. There are more pitfalls, for example, extrasystole is seen. In this case, is a ventricular extrasystole, constrictive pericarditis with septal shift and septal pounds. The ventricular interdependence changes the signal this is then the topic for a specific lecture on constrictive pericarditis. Furthermore, there is no differentiation between hypervolemia and elevated pressures by means of pulmonary arterial hypertension possible. So in case of hemodynamics, the S to T reversal is seen in the previous case denotes a volume overload. Here also see a smaller S wave, a little bit larger D wave and here the prominent A wave, a very prominent A wave also points to elevation of feeling pressures and towards hypervolemia, which was present in this patient. So we go back to the initial evaluation. We have this dilated IVC, the dilated hepatic veins, and this is a grade three congestion. Very often for this signal, you need really a relevant tricuspid regurgitation as well. But keep in mind, this is now pointing towards, and this fits also the BMOD imaging VC to a relevant congestion. The next is the portal venous signal. The portal vein, you can see over here, the signal should be positive. So red in the color Doppler imaging. If you cannot always get the red signal and you see it in a different angulation, it also can be that this is a negative signal. But keep in mind, optimally, also for purposes of comparison, you always should measure it same. In this case, you can measure it from a subcoastal view, from a CPC view, mid axillary, for example, with of course color Doppler signal guidance, the red signal. In this case, there is a definitely pulsatility present, so there is congestion present. 
here you have an example then of the next step, the kidney vein. It is often truly difficult. You need color Doppler guidance. Again, look at the color Doppler, the red and blue color, the red for the arterial part you see over here and the blue for the venous signal. And below is venous, on top or above is the arterial measurement and you should measure in the interlobar vessels, the right or the left flank, it doesn't matter, but you should be a little bit inside the kidney parenchyma. To see some signals, that is congestion. So here we have this positility of the portal vein. Here we have more positility and here we have severe pulsation in a severely congested patient. Normally the kidney vein should be a continuous flow, but if you have this S and this D pattern that points towards congestion. Mostly I perform a longitudinal plane with pulsed wave Doppler here, mild congestion. And here you have only this arterial signal and this singular wave, which points towards severe congestion. So continuing with our patient, we have a severely congested patient, actually Vexus grade three severe congestion present. To summarize again, here you have the various grades, we have definitely two severely abnormal waveforms. We have the clinical findings of this patient. So this patient is severely congested. Once more, I want to emphasize that the kidney signal, the kidney vein, venous signal, it's not easy to get. Here you have, for example, one arterial signal and here a little bit of a venous signal of the kidneys, which shows also two waves, but very often it's not an optimal signal. So keep in mind to find one signal you trust and measure it over and over again to get more experience to really be used to what you are seeing. To summarize and to repeat here all the signals for you to memorize and for you to also put in your ICU, put in your echo lab to always make sure that you understand the signal and interpret volume status correctly.